The interscaling block is used for shoulder surgery and clavicle surgery. So to start the interscaling block, proper positioning is very important. The best way to get to the interscaling block is to have the patient sitting up about 30 or 45 degrees. Next, we turn the patient's head away from the shoulder to the opposite side. This gives us a lot of room to put the probe and have our hands come from the posterior side. The proper approach to the interscaling block is to have the needle approach from the posterior side. This avoids the phrenic nerve and allows us to not injure the phrenic nerve with our needle approach. So for the interscaling block, we usually use a high-frequency linear probe. The high-frequency linear probe is best for structures that are superficial. Usually in the interscaling groove, the interscaling nerves or the roots of the brachial plexus lie very shallow, usually two centimeters or less, even in large patients. So to start, I usually set my ultrasound depth to approximately three centimeters in an average size patient. I also set the frequency to general setting or resolution setting in skinnier patients. So to get to the interscaling groove, the best place to start is in the supraclavicular region. The reason we start in the supraclavicular region is that it allows us to use a vascular structure to find the nerves. So when I start, I put the probe on just posterior to the clavicle, aiming straight down the body. In this area, we will see a pulsating artery sitting on the first rib, as well as some pleura, possibly. Posterior to the pulsating subclavian artery are your nerves. Your nerves in this setting are hyperechoic or bright and have many fascicles or dark circles within them. These are the nerves that are going to become the roots of the brachial plexus as we trace backwards up the neck. So now, to find the interscaling groove, we take our pulsating artery, look for the nerves posterior, and we're going to slide the probe back up the neck. The probe slides up the neck as well as tilts as we move the probe up the neck. So here we are moving up the neck, following the upper trunk, the most superior nerves. As we go up the neck, those nerves will become more dark and larger fascicles or dark circles. Now we are up at the interscaling groove. The interscaling groove is found by identifying the anterior scalene muscle anterior, here's to the left of the screen, and the middle scalene muscle posterior to the right of the screen. The nerves are hypoechoic or dark surrounded by hyperechoic or bright fascial covering. Here we are looking at the C5 and C6 nerve roots in the interscaling groove. If I slide the probe anterior, we get a carotid artery with an internal jugular vein on top of it. The sternocleidomastoid is above these structures. As I slide posterior, we have our anterior scaling, our interscaling groove, and posterior is our middle scaling. Here is a very good picture of the nerve roots here and they are sandwiched between the anterior scaling on the left and the middle scaling on the right. So now we are looking specifically at the C5 and C6 nerve roots. Our needle approach comes from posterior. Usually I start the needle approximately one centimeter away from the probe. In this image we see the interscaling groove with the C5, C6 nerve roots. The needle is passing through the middle scalene muscle. You'll see an injection on the posterior side of the brachial plexus. The needle will be then moved underneath the C6 nerve root. An injection will be given now. You can see the local anesthetic spreading on the anterior side of the brachial plexus between the brachial plexus and the anterior scalene muscle, and the needle is positioned below the C6 nerve roots. I usually deposit about 20 to 30 milliliters of local anesthetic. Some people use less to avoid paralysis of the phrenic nerve temporarily from the local anesthetic. 